Now that you know how to load and save data in Altair, put your data into matrices and so on, in this video I'd like to show you how to do computational operations on data. And uh, later on we'll, we'll be using these sorts of computational operations to implement our learning algorithms. Let's get started. Here's my octave window. Let me just quickly initialize some variables uh, to use for our examples. So set A to be a 3x2 matrix and set B to a 3x2 matrix and let's set C to a 2x2 matrix like so. Now let's say I want to multiply two of my matrices. So let's say I want to compute A times C. I just type A times C. So it's a 3x2 matrix times a 2x2 matrix. This gives me this 3x2 matrix. You can also do element-wise operations and do A dot times B. And what this will do is it'll take each element of A and multiply it by the corresponding element of B. So that's A, that's B, that's A dot times B. So for example, the first, el first element gives 1 times 11, which gives 11. The second element gives 2 times 12, which gives 24, and so on. So this is the element-wise multiplication of two matrices. And in general, the period tends to, is, is uh, usually used to denote element-wise operations in Octave. So here is the matrix A, and if I do A dot caret 2, this gives me the, the uh, element-wise squaring of A. So you know, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, and so on. Let's set V to a vector. Let's set V as 1, 2, 3 as a column vector. You can also do 1 dot over V to do the uh, element-wise reciprocal of V. So this gives me 1 over 1, 1 over 2, and 1 over 3. And this works through from HC. So 1 dot over A gives me that element-wise you know, inverse of A. Um, and uh, once again, the period here gives us a clue that this is an element-wise operation. You can also do things like log v. This is an element-wise logarithm of the element of uh, the the v. E to the v is you know base e exponentiation of v's uh, elements. So this is e. This is e squared e cubed because this was v. So this. and uh, I can also do abs v to take the element-wise absolute value of v. So here, you know, v was all positive. But it did abs say minus one, two, minus three. The element-wise absolute value gives me back these uh, non-negative values. And negative v gives me the minus of v. This is the same as negative one times v, but usually you just write negative v instead of negative one times v. And um, what else can you do? Uh, here's another neat trick. So let's see. Let's say I want to take v and increment each of its elements by one. Well, one way to do it is by constructing a 3 by 1 vector that's all 1s and adding that to v. So if I do that, this increments v by from 1 to 3 to 2, 3, 4. The way I did that was length of v is 3. So 1s, length of v by 1, this is 1s of 3 by 1. So that's 1s 3 by 1 on the right. And what I did was v plus 1s 3 by 1, which is adding this vector of all 1s to v, and so this increments v by 1. And uh, you, another simpler way to do it is actually to type v plus 1, right? So here's v, and v plus 1 also means to add 1 element-wise to each of my uh, elements of v. Now, let's talk about uh, more operations. So here's my matrix A. If you want to write A transpose, the way to do that is to write A prime. That's the uh, apostrophe symbol. It's the left quote. So in, in, on your keyboard, you probably have a left quote uh, and a right quote. So this is a, uh, excuse, this is actually a, the standard quotation mark. Is um, uh, you type A transpose. This gives me the you know transpose of my matrix A. And of course, A transpose. If I transpose that again, then I should get back my matrix A. Some more useful functions. Uh, let's say lowercase a is 1, 15 to 0.5. So it's a you know, 1 by 4 matrix. Let's say I set val equals max of a. This returns the maximum value of a, which in this case is 15. And uh, I can do val int max a. And this returns val and int, which are going to be the maximum value of a, which is 15, as well as the index. So it's the element number 2 of a that was 15, so int is my index into this. 
uh, just as a warning, if you do max A, where A is a matrix, what this does is this, this actually does the column-wise uh, maximum. But uh, I'll say a little bit more about this in a second. So using this example of the variable lowercase a, if I do a less than 3, this does the element-wise operation, element-wise comparison. So the first element of a is less than 3, so it gives 1. Second element of a is not less than 3, so this value says 0, because that's false. The third and fourth elements of a are, uh, this, I meant less than 3, third and fourth elements are less than 3, so this gives 1, 1. So this does the element-wise comparison of uh, all four elements of the variable lowercase a to 3, and it returns true or false, depending on whether or not it's less than 3. Now, if I do find a less than 3, this will tell me which are the elements of a, the, the variable a, the less than 3. And in this case, the first, third, and fourth elements are less than 3. For my next example, let me set a to be equal to magic 3. Uh, the magic function returns, um, let's type health magic. The magic function returns uh, functions called magic, returns these matrices called magic squares. They have this um, uh, you know, mathematical property that all of their rows and columns and diagonals sum up to the same thing. So, uh, you know, it's not actually useful for machine learning, as far as I know, but I'm, I'm just using this as a convenient way, you know, to generate a 3 by 3 matrix. And, and these magic squares, right, have, prop have the property that each row, each column, and the diagonals all add up to the same thing. So it's kind of a mathematical construct. Um, I use magic. I use this magic function only when I'm doing demos or when I'm teaching octave like this, and I don't actually use it for any, you know, useful machine learning application. But uh, let's see. If I type RC equals find a greater than or equals seven, this finds um, all the elements of a that are greater than or equal to seven, and so RC sends a row and column. So the one one element is greater than seven. The three two element is greater than seven, and the two three element is greater than seven. So let's see. The 2, 3 element, for example, is a, 2, 3, is 7, is this element out here, and that is indeed greater than equal 7. By the way, I actually don't even memorize myself what these find functions do and what all of these things do myself. And whenever I use the find function, sometimes I forget myself exactly what it does. And, you know, I type help find to look up the document. OK, just two more things I'm going to quickly show you. One is the sum function. So here's my a and then type sum a, this adds up all the elements of a, and if I want to multiply them together, I type prod a, prod sends the product, and this returns the product of uh, these four elements of a. Uh, floor a rounds down these elements of a, so 0 0.5 gets rounded down to 0, and seal or ceiling a gets rounded up, so 0 0.5 uh, rounded up to the nearest integer, so 0 0.5 gets rounded up to 1. You can also um, Let's see, let me type ran3 to generate a 3 by 3 matrix. If I type max ran3, ran3, what this does is it takes the element-wise maximum of uh, two random 3 by 3 matrices. So you notice all of these numbers tend to be a bit on the large side because uh, each of these is actually the max of a randomly, of, of a element-wise max of two randomly generated matrices. This is, a, this is my magic number, this was my uh, magic square 3 by 3 A. Let's say I type max A, uh, and then this weird open close square brackets comma 1. What this does is this takes the column wise maximum. So the max in the first column is 8, max in the second, second column is 9, the max in the third column is 7. This 1 means to take the max along the first dimension of A. In contrast, if I were to type max A, this funny notation 2, then this takes the per row maximum, so the max of the first row is 8, max of the second row is 7, max of the third row is 9, and so this uh, allows you to take maxes either you know, per row or per column. And uh, if you want to, and uh, remember, it defaults to a column-wise element, so if you want to find the maximum element in the entire matrix A, you can type max of max of A, like so, which is 9, or you can turn A into a vector and type max of A colon like so, and this treats this as a vector and takes the um, max, of, uh, max element of that vector. Finally, 
let's set A to be a 9 by 9 magic square. So remember, the magic square has this property that uh, every column and every row sums the same thing, and also the diagonal. So here's a 9 by 9 magic, uh, magic square. So let me do sum A1. So this does a per column sum. So I'm going to take each column of A and add them up. And this you know, lets us verify that indeed for a 9 by 9 magic square, every column adds up to 369, adds up to the same thing. Now let's do the row-wide sum. So that's sum A comma um, 2. And this sums up each row of A. And indeed, each row of A also sums up to 369. Now let's sum the diagonal elements of A and make sure that they, that, that also sums up to the same thing. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is construct a 9 by 9 identity matrix. That's I9. And I'm going to take A and construct you know, multiply A elements-wise. So here's my matrix A. I'm going to do A dot times I9. And what this will do is take the element-wise product of these two matrices. And so this should wipe out everything in A except for the diagonal entries. And now I'm going to do sum, sum of A of that. And this gives me the um, sum of this, these diagonal elements. And indeed, it is 369. Uh, you can sum up the other diagonal as well. So instead of top left to bottom right, you can sum up the opposite diagonal from bottom left to top right. Um, the, sum, the, the commands for this is uh, somewhat more cryptic. You don't really need to know this. I'm just showing you this in case any of you are curious. But um, let's see. Flip, U, flip UD stands for flip up down. But uh, if you do that, that turns out to sum up the elements in the opposite of uh, the other diagonal of A, and that also sums up to uh, 369. Here, let me show you. Whereas I9 is this matrix, flip up down of I9, you know, takes the identity matrix and flips it vertically, so you end up with, uh, excuse me, flip UD, end up with ones on this opposite diagonal as well. Just one last command, and then uh, that's it, and then uh, that'll be it for this video. Let's say A to be the Magic three by three magic square game. If you want to invert a matrix, you type p in a. Uh, this is technically called the pseudo inverse, but it doesn't matter. Just think of it as basically the inverse of a, and uh, that's the inverse of a. And so I can set you know temp equals p in of a, and if I take temp times a, this is indeed the identity matrix with essentially ones on the diagonals and zeros on the off diagonals, up to a numerical round off. So that's it for how to do uh, different computational operations on the data and matrices. Uh, and um, after running a learning algorithm, often one of the most useful things is to be able to look at your results, or to plot or visualize your results. And in the next video, I'm going to very quickly show you how, again, with one or two lines of code, using Octave, you can quickly visualize your data or plot your data and uh, use that to better understand you know, what your learning algorithms are doing.